In this episode, I'm going to jump right into editing to show how I turn this into this, removing that annoying storage pod that was in the driveway. Now, when you show up to a shoot and you see something like this, don't cringe, don't see red, see green. It's dollar signs. It's a money-making opportunity because you can edit this for a cost or you can come back for another shoot. Now, depending on what the realtor wants to do, the client wants to do, depending on their schedule and their time, they might not be able to have you come back. So being able to edit this is another way that you can have an add-on that you can charge for. I typically charge about 50% of my on-site time, which makes this very worthwhile. In this case, I charged a half hour of my time, but if it takes you an hour or more, don't be afraid to charge that. This is something that is an add-on, it's a service that you can provide. So don't try to rush through it. In this case though, what I'm going to do is show from the very high level, the techniques that I use to capture the proper footage from a very high level, what you would do to edit that in. And then I'll dig a little bit deeper if you're not familiar with some of the editing techniques and tools, I'll dive into those in the last portion of this tutorial. So to capture this footage, it was on a very rainy day. I shot a bracket. Here is the uh, sky uh, exposure. This is the house exposure. And by the way, for all these settings, you might be familiar with them if you have my book on exterior real estate photography. I have a link to that down in the description for this video. I won't necessarily need it for this particular episode, but I have other information in the description as well that you might find useful. So anyways, after taking this photo, we decided to do just this one money shot, but to be able to clone all this in is impossible because of the house. So how do we get that house in the background? Well, after you take this shot, go around to the other side and shoot that house. This is then your background fill layer that you can use once you are able to then edit out where that pod is. Another problem that we're facing here is that there's a stone pillar. So I can't really take this one here and edit it in. It's going to be much more difficult. So take another shot. Go over here, shoot the house straight on. I've got a nice looking pillar. Compared to the original shot, which that pillar would be blocked by this palm tree. So anyways, there was three shots in all that were able to edit then the house in the background, use this for the pillar, and then this was then the main shot. Both of these shots then for the pillar and the background were then resized and warped into place using the distortion tool to be able to get a more realistic look. It's not completely realistic because you can see there's some fencing here, the agapanthus that's right here. It doesn't go right up to the driveway like I show in my finished shot, but this is close enough to realism to be able to not have false advertising and of course be able to still remove this pod. So in Photoshop, I would start at the very bottom and that's our original layer. Then what I would do is I would bring in those other shots. And so these were all just loaded up and you can see though that they weren't really used for the rest of it. They were off, but what I was able to do was then take the one that was shot as our background fill layer, resize it, and then mask that in around where the pod was. Then I did the same thing for that uh, stone pillar by taking that straight on shot and warping that into place. So we zoom in here and we can see that if I turn that mask off, you can see that that was the garage door and everything that was there. I copied that from that straight on shot and then used the distortion tool and resize tool and got that into position where it should be. Then after some masking, I've got something useful. Now to get the rest of it edited out, I still have though a little bit and the driveway is fairly simple. I like to merge my layers together and by doing that this was basically done. So I merged everything that I had into one layer and then using a boundary by defining that boundary with the polygon tool I could clone in parts of the driveway. Now the rest of these layers then are just some of my mistakes and I'll just zoom in here to show you some of them. So one thing that I fixed was that this wasn't quite right. So down here at the bottom I, I made a copy of that layer and cloned it a little bit better. Then when I added my sky exposure here, I noticed, which this was going to be for the sky swap that I added later, it gets me this darker image of view around some of the tree branches, that I noticed there was some other stuff that was missing here. For instance, that house is just not quite there. My mistake. So I took that uh, next door shot for the background fill. I just made a copy and I edited just that amount right there. So anyways, that's all that that was. Once again, this was just correcting my mistakes. And another mistake I made, there was some stuff that was missing 
right here. So I copied all those, merged those layers, and then I filled that and did some better cloning, which also then removed this lantern because there was no lantern that was on that particular pillar. So once that was there, then the rest of it was just your pretty much standard stuff like I show in the video on sky swaps. Here's that sky swap put in there. I added a brightness layer that was clipped to it with a clipping mask to make it a little bit more realistic. They wanted some greener grass and with their permission, it's like, okay, I'll do it if you asked me to. And once again, these things are added editing costs. So that's how all that was done. Let's now take a look at some of the editing tools. Now, some of the tools I'm going to talk about here are also talked about in my advanced editing book. I have a link to that in the description, also this video. But one of the things to just bear in mind, and I can't stress this enough, is that to really do real estate photography, you do need to learn how to use Photoshop or other editing tools as well. They can help a lot. So don't be afraid of it. If you're new to Photoshop, you're used to just using Lightroom, or even if that's more confusing, work on your skill sets on these. It really does pay off in the long run. Anyways, let's now dive into some of this more nitty gritty of using these editing tools. So the first thing I would do is I want to be able to get this fill in here. So you can see that's done there. The way that you do that is you would take that shot, which was this one, next door full, meant to be next door fill. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here so that we can see what I'm going to do. First thing is to duplicate that layer so you can reuse it, resize it, use it again if you need to. So hold that layer, do control J. Now that I've got that duplicated, you can see it's just a copy of that. I'm going to change its opacity down so that I can then start resizing this a little bit. I'm going to go to Edit, I'm going to go to Transform, and then I'm just going to use Scale. Later on, we'll also use Distort for some other things. But just scaling that then, I can scale that down and then move it around to where I can see that would probably fit in. Now you want to get closer. While you're still doing this, just press Control plus. That does your zoom in. Control minus would zoom out. So Control plus we can get in there. Then hold down your space bar. You've got now the hand tool to move it. Then move that where you need to. Now once you release the space bar, you're back using the move tool with inside scale. Remember, I'm doing the scaling tool here. And if that looks pretty good, you can hit Enter or press this little check mark up there. So that's in there. Let's change that opacity back to 100%. Okay, now that that's in there, let's add a layer mask and let's zoom out a little bit. So you can do it a number of different ways. I like to do it from the menu. I go to layer, layer mask, and then I'll do hide all. So next I need to be able to select this storage container. So what I'm going to do is go down here to that layer, our base layer. I'm going to use the quick selection tool. And with it in add mode, I'm going to make that about that big and select it. I'm going to go around and make sure that I select as much of that as I can. And as soon as I do, that looks pretty good to fill in where the house is. At this point, I could also subtract where the driveway is because you can see it's overlapping it. But for right now, I'm going to go here to the mask of that next door fill copy that we made and put into place. I'm going to reverse the colors on my keyboard, which are right now white and black. We want them black and white, so press X on your keyboard. On the mask, then press the delete key. Immediately that adds that in there. Now it's not quite all in there, so what you can do is we'll first just deselect that, and then you can take a brush, maybe 100% opacity. To do that, you want to make sure that your colors are white and black, not black and white, so press X on the keyboard, and then be able to brush that in. So this is just some of the editing you can do to make sure this is where I want, this is exactly how I want to fill this in, and then just kind of work on that. So anyways, that gets us our house there. Now, we need to get the driveway back to where it should be. You can see this grass is too far over on that driveway. So what I'd like to do is to make a duplicate layer of these two. So I'm going to select these layers, just all of them doesn't matter. Control J to duplicate them, right click, and then say to merge those layers. Now I have one layer that I can use for cloning. So we'll zoom in here. What I'm going to do first is to make a boundary to edit this. To see where the boundary should be, I'm going to temporarily turn off this layer and also the one underneath of it so that I can see where the driveway was. I'm going to then use the polygon lasso tool 
And with that, I'm going to go down here to the corner of the driveway and make what I think should be probably the line to where the driveway would be. And that would be fine. Just any type of boundary there. The reason I did it that way, when we turn this other layer back on, is that we can see now this will constrain our boundary for editing. So at this point now, what I can do is use the clone tool. If I go up to the clone tool, it's in normal mode, I can now take and sample sections of the driveway, go over here and clone those in. Now, if I didn't get the boundary quite right, that's not a problem. You can just clone this and add it later. And of course, I would clone better some of the lines and all that. So we don't necessarily have to do that right now, but that's all that you would do. And you just clone, clone, clone until you get that driveway where you need it. This shouldn't be there. Obviously, you could clone that too. So now, though, we want to get that pillar, right? And after you clean up all this stuff, putting that pillar in place was a little unique. So if you remember, this is what it was like this. What that required me to do was go down here to this straight on shot. We'll just open him only. In here, what I did was I just copied using the polygon tool. So I had enough stuff to overlap. I used a polygon and I just grabbed a whole bunch of stuff here that I can then add it later. When I do that, with that layer selected, press Control C to copy it, turn the layer off, go back up to where we were editing, deselect, with Control D and then do Control V to paste that in place. Now that I've got that there and it's above then where we were editing, now I can warp that into place. And the best way, once again, I like to lower the opacity, zoom in here, and then you can use Edit, Transform, and then Distort. So with that then, once again, just like the move tool, you can move it to where you need to be and you can distort it into place. I can see though first that, yeah, it's it's probably a little bit on the big side. I could scale it using this, but before we do, let's just scale it. So get it, transform and scale. So doing that, let's get it to just about the size that should be. Looking at that through the, eh, it looks like that'd probably be about the right size. Judging it by the length of the garage door. Okay, that looks good. Now we can do our distort. So we go to Edit, Transform, and then Distort. And then with this, we can change the angle of it. We can change the perspective. It should probably be more of a perspective like this. And I'm using the garage door as a guide. You can see how I'm looking through. It's transparent. So now I can move it back and forth and see where that probably should be. So I would say that's probably good right about there. So we just then click this little checkbox, or you can hit Enter change the opacity to 100% on that layer. So we change that opacity to 100%. Now let's just put a layer mask on it. We'll go layer mask hide all. Now what we can do is to say, well, let's do a boundary edit by putting that right about here. So let's take that first. We'll do our boundary, just a real rough boundary. And over here, we'll take a brush and maybe brush in at 100% flow those that pillar right there. So that's starting to look pretty good. It's starting to blend in there, but I've still got that garage door, so I need to edit that out. So another way to do that too is to take the quick selection tool. We'll just deselect that. Take the quick selection tool, select outside of that, like that. There we go. And then you can just delete that from the layer mask if you need to. Get that little piece there. There we go. So then you can deselect it. Now you can see what's happening is we now are starting to have our base of everything put together. It's getting very, very close. So what I would do at this point is to then replicate all these layers and then merge them together and do some more cloning. And that's really all there is to it. Don't want to waste your time going through every single step of that, but that's just where you start refining it. Once again, you would do some boundary edits like we did along the driveway to get rid of maybe some of this right here. And remember that when we do this, we want to have some type of merged layer. So in this case, we have these two layers right now is all that's active, right? So I would take these two layers and I want to preserve them. So I would do control J and then merge just those two layers together. And then a lot of stuff, like I said, you could, you could go in here and fix all this stuff, do boundary editing, draw a polygon around like, for instance, where you think the driveway should be, 
get around those palm fronds, use the, uh, the clone tool. And with the clone tool, then you could clone in parts of that and it will go right up then to the cement. So you would do all that to your heart's content to where you then start feeling it's accurate. You can see on this particular example, I, I bled some of the grass out here. So you would do the same thing, put a boundary edit around the sidewalk, the driveway, clone in cement. So zooming back out here, if we take a look at the work that I did here, after doing all these edits and I was merging stuff together here and fixing all my problems, then I was able to then get ready for my sky swap. And that's pretty easy to do. And once again, that's shown in another video, but popping that in with a brightness layer on top of it, then just adding that color fill layer, the final product looked like this. So once again, you show up and you see something like that, don't cringe, don't see red, see green, it's dollar signs, it's a money-making opportunity if you can start building your skill set to do editing. Remember that editing is a very important part of being a photographer. If all that you do is go out and shoot homes and you outsource all of your editing, you're really nothing more than a glorified shutter release. Being a photographer does mean that you're able to work with all the product that you create as you go through a shoot. Ansel Adams was the same way in the darkroom and he would do his own dodging and burning. He would work with his own negatives in the same way as an experienced professional photographer, you can then advance your skill set and your artistic abilities as well by learning how to edit and also knowing then while you're on site, the footage you can capture to make your edits work. And then when you get back, you'll know how to paste those things together, put it together while making money doing it at the same time.